I have a simple form here that deals with names, but a concern might be that a user is passing a name that's incorrect. If the assistant is asking, what's your name? It could be that the user just writes down X. And a single character, that wouldn't be correct for a name. So what we might want to do is have some sort of a validation step here. The idea behind a validation step would be that we have a custom action that checks whether or not the slot that is currently being passed in is of good quality. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to add a custom action to this form that is going to be performing this validation. Now, a validation is very much like a custom action. So one thing that we shouldn't forget to do is add a custom action like we normally would. A difference though is that a validation is technically a different kind of custom action. So the name needs to start with validate. Also note that the name is chosen consciously. If you want to write a custom validator, then the action needs to adhere to the naming standard, validate underscore, and then the name of the form. And just to confirm, the name of the form is name form because we are asking for a name. So that means that indeed this name is correct. Now, looking at the implementation, there's a few things to keep in mind. In particular, note that this form validation action is imported here. It's not a normal action, it's slightly different. But we still need to have a method that gives the appropriate name back. Now note that we don't have the run method that we normally have in a custom action. We now have a validate first name method. One thing to point out, again, is the naming standard here. To validate a specific slot, we have to give it a specific name. The name of the slot that I'm validating here is first name. So you can see that indeed we are adhering to the correct standard. And the next thing to observe is that the signature here is different than the normal run method that you're used to in a custom action. In particular, the main thing that's different is that we get this slot value that is passed in, which is the value that is assigned to this first name in the form. The check that I'm performing here is I'm saying if that string, that slot value, that name that is being passed, if the length of that is equal than or less than two, then we are going to dispatch a message notifying the user that we think the name is too short and that we are assuming that it's misspelled. And what we'll then do is we're going to return a dictionary that sets the given slot back to none. This none is the trigger that our form needs to ask for the value once more. If there's nothing wrong, then we go to this other branch and we just set the slot value directly. I'm doing this for the first name, but I'm doing the exact same thing here for the last name as well. So let's explore this. Once again, my endpoints.yaml is configured. So I need to run my actions first. And then here I will call Raza Interactive so we can see what is happening to the slot values as well. Okay, that's loaded. So let's make this a little bit bigger. And let's start typing. I'll trigger the intent to start the form. And that's correct. And so far so good. The form is active. We are asking for the first name and it's currently set to none. If I now just pass a single character X, notice what happens. We see a print statement happening here, one that I did set in my custom action, confirming that indeed our name is too short. We then see that we are uttering that the name is short and that it's probably misspelled. And then we also see that the first name slot isn't set. And we are back to requesting the first name. So if I were now to type Vincent, we would see that the length is indeed long enough now and that this first name is now properly set. If I were now to give a last name that is too short, we should see that indeed something is invalidated. And again, we see that 
it's picking up correctly that the name is too short. If I were now to say that my last name is Vincent, everything should be fine. So now the slots are set, and that's because we have validated it with our custom action. So there you have it. You're able to use custom Python code to validate incoming data. And that's nice because that allows you to maybe connect to a database here to confirm whether or not what you're receiving is indeed correct. The way that you handle these validations typically depends a lot on your specific use case, but it's nice to know that you can be as flexible as you like.